This is The Good Government Show. The more that we engage the five senses, the better we can make sense of our world and how do we fit in the world. You know, sensory stimulation has become such a therapy, therapeutic part of, of so many people's lives. And that's what this edition of The Good Government Show is all about. How to Stimulate Our Senses. I'm Carol Dioria. And I'm David Martin. This time on The Good Government Show, we're discussing the sensory trail. And this is an award-winning project that can provide outdoor stimulation for everyone, but in particular, it's folks who have a variety of disabilities. In Harvard County, Maryland, which is a suburban county just north of Baltimore, there are about 3,000 children with disabilities. And so that county executive along with its Parks and Recreation Department and Community Services, all those officials put their heads together and built the Sensory Trail. Here's Rachel Harbin. She's the manager of Harvard County's Office of Disability Services. It is along a paved path in one of our beautiful parks, and it has 10 different stations that are stationed about one-tenth mile apart from each other on this trail. So they are interactive, they are made of plastic and stainless steel and other durable materials, and they are very colorful. Um, I know you can't, I wish you could see them. Um, they are um, bright colors, and each of them offers something different in terms of senses. So we have huge chimes. Uh, we have a lot of music, musical stations. So the chimes are the, are the big attraction. When you first drive in the park, you'll see these big chimes that are six feet tall. And you have, they have two rubber mallets and kids can play them and the noise just resounds through the park is beautiful. Um, and then you can place your hand on, on the huge chimes to stop them. Um, and then you, know, you walk a little ways down the trail and there, there's a huge rainbow spinning circle that you can take your hand and you can hold onto this handle and you spin it around and inside you can hear it sounds kind of like pebbles like in a rain stick as you spin it so that you know it's it's the auditory and then it's it's the visual with the colors um and then you continue on there's physical things for the physical stimulation we have a huge roller table that's about two feet off the ground it's made of stainless steel rods that are perfectly placed so that you will never get pinched by them you won't pinch your clothes or your or your skin but you actually can lay on it and there's stainless steel rods going across you in a, over top of you, like in a dome. And you just pull yourself along your back. It like, kind of like massages your back. You can, it's taller than, it's 10 feet, 10 feet long and you can just roll right down it. Um, and, people, and you can just pull yourself up and back, back with it. It, it creates a lot of laughter, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of fun. Um, we definitely, we wanted these stations to be available for all ages. So, adults with disabilities, adults of any abilities can use all of these and they do. Uh, if you visit our park, you will see people of all ages and abilities uh, playing at these stations because they're just, they're just so fun. You're enjoying nature, you're getting a little bit of exercise um, and it's fully accessible. So if you have, if you're in a wheelchair, the path connecting all of the stations is paved, but then as you kind of turn into each station, that is um, accessible as well. So it's not much, it's a soft asphalt. So this trail actually sounds like it could be a lot of fun. Does it get a lot of use? Actually, it does. About a thousand people visit the trail every weekend. And Rachel shared this really wonderful story about a young boy who had his birthday party at the sensory trail. You know, we had one family who reached out to me to share that they had a young child a young boy with autism who had never had a birthday party before because they just couldn't picture having a party at one of those typical places like a bounce house or something all those kind of things they thought would be too overwhelming and so he had his first friend's birthday party when he was six at the sensory trail so he invited friends from his class um, who did not have disabilities and they all loved it equally and it was such a the mom said it was such a safe environment for him because he could use all the equipment. He loved all the equipment. And it was so fun that all of the kids, you know, it's not, it doesn't look like it's something just for kids with disabilities. It's so fun for everyone. Oh, well, what a great story. That's really cute. What a great example of the sensory trail and use. 
I, I bet they all had a really fun birthday party. You know, I hope there was pizza. Was there pizza? <laughs> I think there was. Pizza, birthday cake? I Absolutely. Mean, you know, even though it was outdoors? Right. All right. It was all there. Good. All right. Just check it. Yes. So a kid with autism can, you know, can really get overwhelmed and be being outside in the park environment. It really helps. Heck, my own kid got overwhelmed. Listen to this, David. She yes. was about four years old. I took her to a birthday party and they had a clown. Well, well clowns, are, clowns can be scary. This one had big feet. I'll admit well, it. Well, sure. That's scary. <laughs> she screamed like somebody was killing her. It was really embarrassing. So I had to take her out of the room and calm her down. It's okay. So the point is that little kids really can have a problem. And she didn't have autism. So can you imagine a child with a disability? It could be a problem. All right. This trail can help kids with all kinds of disabilities. We know now that as more research comes out, the benefits of sensory play. So not just for children with disabilities, but for everybody. The seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, smelling. The more that we engage the five senses, you know, the better we can make sense of our world and how do we fit in the world. Um, and so, you know, sensory stimulation has become such a therapy, therapeutic part of, of so many people's lives, uh, you know, in the school system and, and other therapies that for us, we really felt like it would be worth this investment. Um, and it was an investment, um, but we had wonderful community partners that came alongside of Harford, Harford County government to make this project possible. That is great. Um, what about somebody who's blind? There's plenty for someone who is blind. I mean, there's so much texturally on all of the stations um, and also, you know, auditory. We have, um, we have a set of drums. We have, you know, it looks like xyl a couple of xylophones. So once you make your way to the xylophone, I mean, you don't need to see to be able to make some beautiful music on those xylophones, that's for sure. Drums and xylophones. So what does this look like? I mean, I would have loved to be able to make big noise in a park when I was a kid. Yes, because I'm sure even as a kid, now this is just a guess, but were you always the loudest kid in the room? Okay, well, maybe not the loudest, but <clears throat> I do recall that my teacher did write on my report card, you always know when David's in the room. Um, and you look, it, it's not just me. Come on, Carol. You've had a career in radio for years. You've been speaking to millions. You're telling me you were the little quiet kid? No, I don't uh... I sure was. I was always, always the one who sat in the front of the classroom, and I was very quiet. Now, you have to understand, I went to Catholic school, and I sure as hell didn't want to get in trouble with the nuns. No, you don't want to get in trouble with the nuns. No, but back to your question. They have drums set up on this sensory trail. They have kettle kundu, and goblet drums. It's all part of the park equipment. So they're permanent and they're waterproof. And you can just bang on them like they're bongos and make all the noise you want. So that's kind of like having a permanent bass drum right in your own backyard. Exactly. And the xylophones are fun too. They are about four feet wide and three feet off the ground. And they come with a mallet. So you can bang on the chimes and make your own music. So Carol, all right, I'm, I'm hooked here. So <laughs> here's what we should do. Let's get a few bottles of wine. You work the xylophones. I'm on the drums. We'll have a little outdoor concert going. What, yeah. what do you think? Oh, yeah. Music in the park and wine. I'm all in. All right, good. The sponsor of the Good Government Show is Liquid. We love Liquid, and not just because they are our sponsor. But that is why we love Liquid, because they're our sponsor. But do you know why they're called Liquid? No, why? Well, because every time you walk in, they say, would you like something to drink? Oh, really, David? Yes, yes. That's, they have liquids. <laughs> so like you walk in, right. You walk in, they have this big refrigerator, depending on which office you go to. They have a big refrigerator. They have a big coffee room. You have, you have liquids. You have water. You have tea. So you, you want something to drink? You go to liquid. How's okay. That okay. That might not actually be why they're called liquid, but it's a great name for a company. And what they do do, is Liquid helps companies find their customers and helps them engage in digitally. There's a story they told us, a fifth generation business. Uh, Liquid got involved, they helped them tell their story. They highlighted the rich history on a new website that Liquid created. So the family had trouble, they were talking about their products, but Liquid gave them a couple of glasses of water, they all sat down, they talked about it, maybe they had a little coffee, maybe something else, I don't know, they had liquids, but they showed them a clear way to get their message across. 
And now they have a new award-winning website, thanks to Liquid, and they probably have their own refrigerator for like bottled water. <laughs> Liquid has a full creative staff. They find out where each customer's clients live online, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or even LinkedIn, whatever it is. The bottom line is Liquid helps their customers with a full digital marketing campaign. And that's why we love Liquid. They offer you drinks, but they make digital work. So check them out on the World Wide Web uh, at liquidint.com. That's liquidint.com. The Good Government Show is also sponsored by the Rodale Institute. Well, what is the Rodale Institute, you say? Well, the Rodale Institute is growing the organic movement through research, farmer training, and consumer education. Hey, they make healthy food. What's better than healthy food that tastes great? With eight locations across the country and online educational programs, Rodale Institute provides workshops, webinars, and online courses. Like, you could learn to be a beekeeper, or you could learn how to grow epic tomatoes, and the classes are very affordable. Rodale does farm consulting and training programs, helping to move the business and products of our agricultural system to a more organic and regenerative future. Check them out at rodaleinstitute.org. That's rodaleinstitute.org. The Good Government Show is also sponsored by Cutstown University, with more than 130 areas of study, 200 student groups, and 22 Division II sports teams. Cutstown University is the perfect place to find your passion, right in the Lehigh Valley of Pennsylvania. Here's what I know about Cutstown. They have a great rugby team. I've seen them play. They're very good. And they have a sports management program, which is among some of the many business programs they have. The school started as a teacher's college, and they still have an excellent educational program. Arts programs and a German history program are just some of the many ways that Cutstown University stands out. At Cutstown, you can truly major in discovering yourself. That's Cutstown University. The Sensory Trail can help kids with disabilities accomplish so much, but the Sensory Trail isn't the only thing they built. So... David, this is for you. What's considered the great American pastime? Well, I guess you're talking about baseball. Right. So what's your favorite team? Well, with this story, we're in Baltimore, so I should say the Orioles, but uh, yeah, not really that year. So I'm going with my hometown, New York Yankees. Yeah, and I probably shouldn't say this too loudly, but I like the Mets. No, no. You can't really say that. Well, I guess you can say that, but well, it's a tough Well, I have a soft spot in my heart for them. Well, but you know, the lovable loser thing. I get it. Okay. <laughs> this isn't a ball field for the American or the National Leagues. They built a ball field for the Miracle League, and they built it right next to the Sensory Trail. It's all part of the same park. So what's the Miracle League? Can you actually get to the Yankees or the Orioles or even the Mets from the Miracle League? No, but... The Miracle League lets kids with disabilities dream big league dreams. Let's have Rachel explain it. So the park itself is large and it does have a lot of trees, a lot of paths. It has huge baseball fields. This century trail is actually when you drive in right along the front of the park. So it's actually not shaded. It's actually open so that you can see the entire park as you're, as you're walking um, towards it. Um, at the end of the trail, we built a Miracle League baseball field. So that is a special baseball field for children and adults with differing abilities to play baseball. So it is a special turf that wheelchairs um, or anyone can use. So for example, if you fall and trip, it's not gonna, it's not gonna be, um, it's not gonna be painful. And they play with a buddy system. So baseball players, uh, without disabilities, will partner with the children or adults who do have disabilities to play, you know, the favorite pastime, baseball. <laughs> well, that's cool. So the kids can play baseball, and they have a dedicated park just for them. And they play. But the Miracle League field gives the kids and adults another sports activity. Well, you know, that's excellent. Just different ways to move around and get physical, extra options to be out in the air and moving around, and all exercise in any form is good, right, Carol? You're asking me? You're the guy who still plays rugby, so you tell me. Okay, all right. Well, yes, um, except maybe playing rugby. Uh, yes, anytime uh, you get to move your muscles around, it's good. You know what, Carol? I'm going to help you out. When we're done with this, we're going to go to the park. We're going to play a little one-on-one -on -one basketball. What do you oh, say? Oh, next time. Next time. All right, next <laughs> CYO time. CYO basketball, I have to tell you this. I was the kid who shot for the other team's basket. I always got the baskets mixed up. 
So you know what they did? They made me a guard so I couldn't get into too much trouble. All right. Well, okay. So no basketball. All right. I'm playing squash later. You can come. Okay. I'll just watch. No, no. You're going to play. <laughs> so with all these extras, they have got a, they've got a baseball park. They've got all these uh, outdoor activities. Um, you know, every time there must be more costs, more costs. Um, so this must have been expensive. Right. And you could hear it going to ching but it was pretty worthwhile. One of the things that made it doable was that Harford County already owned the land. That was a big thing. Barry Glassman is the county executive of Harford County. He said the total cost was about $150,000, and it was a public-private venture, which made it even better. Once we got the design and, and the equipment, and we kind of had a ballpark of the, of the cost, we knew that each of the stations uh, would, would be around $22,000, say. And, and so we began to solicit uh, different community members. And actually, the Harford Center, where I first served, uh, was one of the sponsors, our library system, uh, United Methodist Churches, uh, the Ark of Northern Chesapeake, uh, APG Federal Credit Union. So we, we had an easy time. I mean, it, it really is quite remarkable it's kind of an easy sell. Jones Junction, which has always been good to the community, probably one of the largest car dealers in the region, uh, signed up right away uh, to help us. Uh, our local credit union from Aberdeen Proving Ground uh, and Hartford Mutual Insurance Company. So we did have some for-profit companies participate also. Well, it's so nice to see government working well with local businesses, and it sounds like all this money was really well spent. Oh, it really was. I did an interview with two young disabled women, Cassie and Rebecca, who absolutely loved the sensory trail. They were with an aide who is really a big help to them. First, you're going to hear from the aide. Her name is Jillian Miller. And then you're going to hear from Cassie. Cassie has challenges with her verbal skills. But, you know, if you listen closely, you can hear Cassie's enthusiasm shine through. It's something different. It's something entertaining. If you're not musically inclined... Those instruments make you feel like you're musically inclined. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love a, a music. Me too, me too. Me too, me too. Music lets me up in so many ways. That's great. That's great. It, it lets you express yourself. That's yeah, wonderful. In so many ways. Well, she really seems to love the sensory trail, and they really sound happy. So um, I hope they get out often. Yes, Jillian says just being outside with others makes it a great day. And Cassie couldn't hold back, so listen closely. So they're able to do this once a week yeah. at least, sometimes twice a week. You also have the gazebo where they can come and they can sit. You have the baseball field. There is a playground down at the end. Um, so it's some really nice views, you know, even just to socialize because you can see other people doing other things. A lot of people come and walk their dogs. This is so good to get some fresh air. <laughs> Absolutely. Fresh air is so important. This sensory trail was the first of its kind in that region. Now, many others have since followed and copied. It's really an outgrowth of a whole philosophy. What they're trying to do is level the playing field so everyone can participate. Harper County was no different than you know, the other 23 jurisdictions in Maryland where, in fact, uh, it's an, it was, you know, an underserved uh, segment of the community. And, um, you know, I think sometimes, particularly dealing in the disability community, there's a lot of effort spent on treatment, finding jobs, uh, getting skills up to par, all those kind of things we talk about uh, on kind of the policy side. But, you know, recreation, having fun uh, is something that probably was put on the back burner. And, and so we uh, it's one of the it's kind of an easy and a good a, a good story that we we like to participate in. When you awaken, awaken the spirit, then you can get lots of things done when people feel uh, as good as they possibly can. And recreation is what really moves that along, I think. Yeah. And. You know, and we've seen it not only we have an I Can Bike program that has specialized bikes that we bring in every summer. Uh, and that camp has been booked up and sold out every year uh, where parents can finally bring their children to ride a bike. So 
everyone, you know, you can remember when you first rode a bike. I know uh, even in our, our, our baseball program, we now have a, uh, a specialized field uh, at Shucks Road also where folks can play softball in wheelchairs. And, you know, we all can think about playing uh, softball for the first time, riding a bike for the first time. And, and so when you ask people to give and participate, uh, to give young people, um, you know, that have special, special needs, to, to give them the same opportunity, it, it's an easy sell. It really is. So the Hartford County Trail is really a trailblazer for other similar parks. That's a great example of good government spreading the word. This is just yet another great example on the Good Government Show of government, in this case, Harford County, Maryland, getting the job done. The Harford County Executive, Barry Glassman, sums it up really nicely. And, you know, the nice thing in local government that I, and I spent 16 years in the state legislature uh, as, a rep, of a, as a delegate and senator in Maryland, and it can take years to get uh, projects uh, adopted and legislation passed. Uh, but as county executive, you know, we're, we're one of the big eight counties in the state of Maryland. We have a population of about 250,000 people and uh, a combined general and capital budget of about a billion dollars. But uh, as county executive, you really have the luxury of saying, yes, I want to do this. Let's make it happen. And I hate to simplify it as much as that, but uh, that is one of the great things about local government, uh, particularly uh, on the smaller level, that you can make things move and happen fairly quickly. You know, I can tell Amber Schroes, my director of community services, and um, Rachel Harbin, who you've talked with, and say, no, nope, we'll find the money for this. Uh, it sounds good. We'll make it happen. Plus, we own the property. We own the Shucks Road Complex. Uh, and, and so when you have the property and funding, you can make things happen. And this is exactly why we do these stories, to show how government can work and be effective and efficient. And in Harford County, it looks like they have a county executive who does just that. And so that's the story of the sensory trail in Maryland. Well, I'm in. I want to get out there, and I literally want to bang on the drum all day. Oh, I'll bring the earplugs. Oh, no, no. It's going to be great. Don't forget <laughs> the wine. And, of course, we'll need some backup singers and maybe guitar. Uh, yes, for a concert in the park. Well, let's not record the thing, okay? No, 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 no. I think everyone's going to really want to hear this. I think oh, I think they're going to like it. Oh, no, they would not. Trust me. All right. Well, maybe we'll just get out once. We'll, we'll have a rehearsal and see how we do. <laughs> David, don't quit your day job. All right. Well, thanks, Carol. This is another great story of good government action. Thanks for listening. I'm David Martin. And I'm Carol Dioria. We'll see you next time on The Good Government Show. The Good Government Show is a Valley Park production. Jason Sturshik is our editor and producer. Associate producers are Jade Ludlow and Mackenzie Martin. The executive producers of The Good Government Show are Jim Ludlow, David Martin, and David Snyder. Join us again right here for another episode of The Good Government Show. Music